Hello, this is Doug from Robart, and today we're going to do a video, a how-to video, on the process and procedures to convert a pneumatic 550 series retract to an electric 550 series retract. I'm doing a tri-gear set. I've already done one main and one uh, nose gear. The tools that you'll need for the for the job are a number 10 Torx driver, a pair of needle nose pliers, a sharpie, and then a snap ring uh, pliers. We've got the Zap blue thread locker that comes with your conversion kit, that's important to use, and of course the electric actuator. And, and the first step that I do is is to mark the surfaces of what we call the cam followers or the brass pieces so that we can put the trunnion back into into proper position um, relative to the, the pieces and so what I do is on the right hand one I just put an X and on the left one I put an O and that way I know what orientation these brass pieces um, should be after they're done. Now these these Torx screws go into a spacer and sometimes the spacer wants to turn in, in, instead of backing the Torx screw out. So we'll see how this one goes. That one wants to turn. So what I do is I just put another Torx driver in here And then that just allows me to get that started. And really, this the, the secondary Torx driver is a number eight. It's not even the right one. It just there's enough to uh, to cause it. Now, now the uh, the spacer in this case is turning as they typically do. So what I do is take a needle nose and hold it and I hold it rather tightly so it doesn't spin and mar the surface of that spacer and I do the same for the two front spacers and what I'm doing is ultimately taking the side frame off And then here's where you use the snap ring pliers. There's a, a little snap ring right here that holds the pivot pin on. And you just expand that. Oops. Expand that and take it off. And the pivot pin slides out. The frame will come off. Pivot pin will slide out. And then you can take the trunnion out. And then you can slide the air cylinder off. Now what I do is I put the cam followers just the way they came off. And then I take, my, my needle nose have teeth up front and then no teeth towards the back. I use the back with no teeth. So I just hold the piston rod and turn off the cam pin here and put that aside. The cam pin I just thread onto the electric actuator and I just make sure there's no thread locker in there So that the movement is uh, limited, but it seems like seems like the that it moves fine up and down the the jack shaft. Okay, and then you put the 
camp followers back exactly as they came off because there, when we build this gear there is some hand fitting of the cam follower and the teeth and the trunnion so it's, that's why it's critical to get that, that back. Now this spacer we will not use because the, the screws will go directly into the electric actuator. So this we just take off Oops. and then that spacer will not be used. You can just set it aside. All right, so we're ready to for the assembly process with the new electric actuator. And this can be done in a variety of ways. What I do is I hold the cam followers so they don't fall off. And then I just put one of the screws in here just so it all stays together for me. And then we can put the other frame on. And these I did not tighten. So then we have three other frame spacer screws that go in. Now on these, I just put just a drop of thread locker. And even a drop is sometimes just a little much, but that's better to have slightly too much than not enough. Now just as with taking them off, the spacers want to turn a little bit, so if I just hold it, tightly, so it doesn't mar the finish of the spacer, and then just snug up these screws, these have to be snug, not, not overly tight. And I do the same thing here, just a drop of thread locker. And then these, again, we don't want it overly tight. So what I do is I snug it up and just back it off just a, a fraction of a turn because the actuator does have to have a little bit of up and down motion. So I'll snug it up, just back it off just a little bit. The thread locker will keep that screw from rotating out. Now we just take the, we make sure that the orientation is correct on the cam followers. The, the, the trunnion should, should be towards the, the aft section. And then we just thread that back on the cam followers, and then the pivot pin lines up. And then just put the pivot pin back in. Sometimes it just takes a little jiggling around to have the holes all line up. Okay, and now probably the most challenging part of the whole endeavor is getting the snap ring back on. We do include some spares in the conversion kit just in case these don't cooperate. Oops. 
that seem to cooperate just fine. But just make sure that they're seated all the way down. And then we're, we are converted. So I've got a little testing fixture here, or testing device. So we'll plug that in. And just check for proper movement. You can do this with your receiver, um, electric uh, retract controller, and a battery. And that seems to uh, that seems to work just fine. So then, for a final test, we'll plug all these in. And I always recommend running electric retracts outside of the airplane before you put them in. Just in case there's any difficulty. But one of the difficulties we usually run into, if there is one, is that they work out fine outside the airplane. When you put them in, they seem to bog down. And that's usually because of asymmetric torque um, if, you're, if the rails are not parallel. So if they work well outside of the airplane, you put them into the airplane, screw them down, and they bog down, it's usually because the retract itself is torqued, and all you have to do is loosen these up, find where the um, find where it's not symmetrical, and shim it with, with um, some washers. So we'll, we'll try all three of them. It looks like uh, looks like it works fine. Then you can keep these um, air cylinders if you ever decide to go uh, go the other way. Thank you.